there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. And this is one of my basic skills videos. Very short, bite-sized chunks of how to do stuff. Um, really to give you a foundation of, you know, everyday sort of things that, you know, you may not necessarily be, you know, want to be a qualified mechanic or anything like that, but you want to work on your own car, your own motorbike, and you may want to know how to do something um, just to maintain the vehicle. So today, I'm going to show you how to check spark, and adjust spark plug gap. Now, you can get a special tool for this. This is made by a company called Power Built. Uh, Power Build? Built? Power Built. Yeah, Power Built. And the part number is 648522. Uh, which, and it looks a bit like that. Okay, and it's a special tool that they make for, for making checking spark plugs a lot easier. The gap. Only the gap, nothing else. And the spark plug gap is... The, the gap here between the actual electrode yeah look you can see it better there okay the, the gap between the electrode um, and this little top cap piece here the little hook that comes around okay and that gap's critical because if, if it's too large a gap then it puts stress on the ignition system if it's too small a gap you don't get a big enough spark and it may not ignite the fuel you may get missing and, and underpower that kind of stuff um, so, using this tool, it has a number of bits of wire sticking out around the side, and that wire is of different diameters. Now, we're going to be taking the spark plug out of a little Yamaha SR125, a really old bike that I picked up in Scotland, uh, and we're going to check the spark plug gap on that, and the specification is 0.6 to 0.7 millimeters. Uh, and obviously you're going to need the spec, you're going to need to do a bit of research and find out what the spark plug gap specifications are for your particular vehicle. Otherwise there's no point in trying to adjust the gap because you won't know what it's going to be. Okay, so over to the bike. Okay, a bit of a, becoming a bit of a classic of this whole machine, but uh, real easy to get to for the spark plug. Um, just pull the cap off. And here we have the only spark plug on this bike. It's a single cylinder four stroke. So you can get that taken out. And we'll head over to the bench and we will check and adjust if required the spark plug gap. Should be running a bit rich too, look. Okay. So, yeah, not only is. Uh, We'll go to the spark plug gap, but this spark plug is showing me that it's running rich. Now I can tell that because it's really black and sooty, um, which means it's been on choke most of the time. And that actually is quite consistent with this whole bike because it just doesn't go anywhere anymore. It doesn't go on the road. It's just one that we bought in England and we're just keeping hold of for sentimental reasons. Okay, so spark plug gap. Get our little tool and on here, on the millimeters side, we've got a uh, 0.64 and a 0.76 as two options. A bit like feeler gauges, but a bit different. Um, now the spec was 0.6 to 0.7. So if the 0.64 goes in, but the 0.76 doesn't, then we're not far off. Okay, so here's the 0.64 mil. It should be bang in the middle of what gap we should have, and that, that goes in quite easily, actually. Yeah, it does, does bind a little bit. Okay. And 0.76, is that going to go in or not? No, that doesn't fit. So, it is somewhere, it's basically less than 0.76, but it's slightly larger than 0.64. So, it's probably around about 0.7 of a millimetre, which is right on the edge of spec. Now, we could go a bit more in depth. We could use feeder gauges to do the same job. Uh, and most of you have probably got feeler gauges, but probably haven't got one of these. So let's use a feeler gauge. So let's try and find uh, 0 0.7 millimetres. Where's 0 0.7? 7.11. Oh, God, we're close. Okay, we've got 0 0.71. If this fits, then it's over spec. It needs to be made slightly smaller doesn't fit. That's looking good. Okay. So we know we're less than 0.71 mil. Have we got like a 6.9, 6.3, 6.1, 6, 
six, six, six. What was that one? Six, four. Okay, let's try the six, six. It's about as near as we're going to get. We can always put another feeler gauge together to make up the difference. So, yeah, that does fit just and only just. Hmm, okay. Pretty sure we're actually in spec on this one. Let's see if we can find a point four five point three seven point three three. Okay. Three five six. All right, so 0 0.68 we're up to now. And that doesn't fit. So we are in spec. Cool. Okay. Now, um, I'll use this other plug as a demo. I don't want to spoil that because it's, it's where it is. Um, but this is an old plug. And if you need to adjust it and you've got one of these tools, then you can notice you've got these two sort of plates kicking around. And they have these slots in them. And those slots uh, are pretty much of different sizes. And they just fit, should do, just on there, look, like that. So if I just do that again for you. Okay, you've got the slot, and that slot comes down and goes onto the back. It's a tight fit of the actual uh, top electrode. And if we bend that that way, it will give us more of a gap. And if we bend it the other way, it'll actually close the gap. Uh, what you can do to close the gap as well uh, is you can just rest it on the bench a little bit and just push down. Doesn't take very much at all to move them. If you haven't got one of these, then you can use a little tiny flat screwdriver. And I just so happen to have one here. Now, my videos are all about trying to use a basic set of tools to get all the jobs done. So, would you carry one of those around in your toolkit? Might have it in your workshop, but probably wouldn't carry it around in your toolkit in your car. And if you're fixing somebody's vehicle for them on a Sunday and you've gone to the house, then you could probably have a flat screwdriver. So, to adjust it, just put the screwdriver in the gap and then just very gently ease, ease it open to increase the gap. And it's very tiny amounts, you know, we're not talking very much. Okay, so we'll head over now and we'll stick this back in the bike. Okay, always be sure to start the threads by hand. A lot of these threads on motorcycles are straight into the aluminium. It's very easy to damage the threads on them. And uh, don't over tighten them. It's also important. And there is a torque setting for your spark plug. Which I'm sure if you can find it, you can use that. That's all it needs to be. Done. So there you go, a really short video on how to, first of all, check what spark plug gap you've got, and then also how to adjust it. And you can use feeler gauges, which is probably the most easiest way of doing it. Or you can use, you know, one of those special little tools. You don't need one of these. Are they really that useful? Not really, to be honest. Far better off with a decent set of feeler gauges and a little flat screwdriver. It works just as well. Uh, if not more accurate actually. Okay, there you go. My name is Andy Young. I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. This is one of my basic schools videos. Hopefully you found it helpful. Any questions or comments, leave them down the bottom. Uh, if you want to subscribe and then you'll get notifications, just click the subscribe wherever it is. Don't know where it is on the screen. Probably down there somewhere. Um, click on there and then you'll get emails or whatever through from, from um, YouTube uh, regarding whenever I upload new videos. Okay, hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Over and out.